<laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay. He don't miss. He don't miss. HyperR X has been released some days ago with the Adrenaline 283.9.1 drivers and you guys have been asking me to kind of review the HyperR X since then. And the reason why it took so long is because I wanted to see how the feature would actually behave in several other scenarios than the, than, than the ones presented by AMD of course. And I was testing the RX 7700 XT at the same time and of course I also had to make a clean Windows installation to do a clean Windows installation because I had the Microsoft Store and Xbox apps bugging on me and I wasn't even able to run the Microsoft Flight Simulator and I actually needed it for the GPU tests. The usual Microsoft stuff. But well, HyperRx has been shown as some kind of magical feature that you enable and get more FPS with almost no visual fidelity cost. But is it really that all? HyperRx is a mixtape of some features AMD had before, in this case Radiant Super Resolution that upscales any game using the FSR1 algorithm, so spatial upscaling, Radian Boost, that is a dynamic resolution scaler based on movement, and Radian Anti-Lag that, as the name suggests, reduces the input latency. Being the only real new thing, the Radian Anti-Lag Plus, that is only available with the RX 7000 series and a few supported games. Or like AMD calls them, hyper-tuned games. So even if you have an RX 6000 series, you can kind of enable the HyperRx feature by just enabling Radiant Super Resolution, Radiant Anti-Lag and Radiant Boost on that same game. So what's the benefit of really using the HyperRx then? According to AMD, HyperRx makes all the previous features work together with a single click and makes them more efficient than working separately, possibly leading to a lower FPS loss, lower input latency and so on so on so on. And if the game is one of those hyper-tuned ones, Anti-Lag Plus is available in the mix and according to AMD, AMD RSR will automatically be set one resolution step lower than native or to the FSR quality preset if supported in-game. And I say according to AMD, because according to me, it simply doesn't work. I tried several methods and several games and it simply doesn't step down my resolution automatically. It simply doesn't. I tested Dying Light 2, Fortnite, Cyberpunk 2077 and in none of those games I saw Radeon Super Resolution upscaling automatically. It would instead show an inactive sign when I was running at native resolution and then when I changed the resolution to 1080p for example, I would see the feature finally upscaling from 1080p to 1440p as stated. Something that according to AMD should be done automatically. And sorry for the long intro, but I actually had to give you some insight of my experiences because uh, those will actually be needed for the next opinions that I will give in the video. But opinions are never better than facts and today's sponsor deals are also one. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. And if you don't play that much, well, you can just use the hourly system for as little as 0.35 Canadian dollars. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. So, testing it is. Firstly, we start with Cyberpunk 2077 running native 4K with the RX 7900 XTX and as you can see the image looks pretty crisp apart from the little shimmering in the screens in the end of the road. Something that gets a bit worse as we use the HyperRx that uses RSR to upscale from 1440p to 4K. Actually making worse the shimmering and jagged edges on the road, sidewalk reels and some other objects. As soon as we move to FSR2 also upscaling from 1440p to 4K, the image is much more stable overall, delivering a much crisper image with more details retained and less shimmering and jagged edges. Something that you can see for example in the monitors ahead, that are stable with FSR2 where they were flickering even at native 4K. In terms of performance though, HyperRx does deliver roughly an 80% performance boost over 4K native, while FSR2 delivers 53%. But that's understandable as FSR2 looks considerably better, something that can be seen even here if you put the video in full screen. 
In the inbuilt benchmark we can see that the performance differences didn't change that much and the image quality stands around the same, with 4K native being the best obviously and FSR2 quality looking pretty good as well, with the HyperRX consistently delivering the best FPS numbers of course, but also the lowest image fidelity. With Fortnite running 4K native using TAA, everything looks crisp as it should with no visual artifacts popping out. But as soon as we move to HyperRx, the image gets blurry and with way lower image quality overall, mostly in things like the foliage where the HyperRx fails to upscale properly and delivers a bunch of blurred out pixels, delivering a much worse overall experience. But hey, we got more of those FPS that you like so much. As we use TSR though, the inbuilt upscaler inside the game, the image quality skyrockets compared to HyperRx with a much crisper image and much more details retained from the native 4K gameplay. Definitely a much better upscaling technique by miles. Although there will always be people that will gladly trade higher visual fidelity for better FPS. And for those the HyperRx actually does its job, delivering roughly a 76% FPS boost while TSR delivers roughly 53%. But in this game I would gladly pick TSR as it delivers a very close to 4K image fidelity while delivering much more FPS as well. Easy pick for me here. One of the major points of upscaling is that the final image quality has to be better than the image quality the, that you're upscaling from. For example, 1440p upscale to 4K should always look better than 1440p native, performing roughly the same as 1440p native. So delivering better quality than 1440p native around the same FPS numbers. But once again, does that apply in reality? Let's start with the recently released RX 7700 XT and now with ultra wide resolutions. In Fortnite we can see that both HyperRx and TSR are performing around the same, unlike what we saw with the RX 7900 XTX before, meaning that TSR works even better at lower resolutions. But well, it seems that both technologies upscaling from 1080p ultra wide will perform more or less the same as the native resolution while looking considerably better, especially TSR of course, which is a win-win situation in this case. Moving to Forza Horizon 5, things are a bit different. Firstly, although this game is shown as an hypertune game, it doesn't really use the anti-lag plus nor radiant boost, so someone is actually being deceiving here and it is most likely MD. As for the results, this time we have FSR 2.2 instead of TSR and as we saw in the previous test with the RX 7900 XTX, FSR delivered lower performance. But well, FSR 2.2 is delivering only a 10 FPS boost over the native 1440p ultra wide, which in my opinion is not worth it at all. As for HyperRx, it delivers a 21% performance uplift over 1440p ultra wide, performing virtually the same as 1080p ultra wide native, but looking a bit better as well, which of course is a good thing. So as you see, HyperRx can be indeed a plus for some people, but a big no for others. And one of the things that most games will support and automatically use when you use HyperRx in those same scenarios is Radeon Boost. As I told you before, Radeon Boost is a movement-based dynamic resolution technique, meaning that the render resolution will go down when you're moving your mouse a lot, for example when running, attacking enemies and so on, increasing the FPS for those precise movements in that precise time, without a really big impact in visual fidelity. Well, at least in Dying Light 2. Because as soon as we go to Cyberpunk 2077, you can definitely notice some movement artifacts as soon as you look into V's hands, for example, as they get pixelated like a Japanese adult movie when using Radeon Boost that in this game comes with the HyperRx preset. But well, you can always disable it and enjoy the other features, I guess. And if you're asking my opinion, well, unless you really need those extra frames or you're using it in an older game that doesn't really support FSR2, as you're much better using the normal FSR2 build in the game itself and then adding the other features manually, like for example the anti-lag plus. By the way, I tested it a bit in Dying Light 2 and I could indeed sense a bit of difference when using the anti-lag plus with native resolution as the game did feel very responsive, actually very responsive, when running only around 70 FPS, performance that usually leads to a much choppier experience. And in terms of FPS, I saw absolutely no performance drops when using the anti lag Plus. So the FPS were virtually the same with the frame time being solid as well. And for me, this is definitely the best experience you can get in an overall gaming scenario, even more if you're playing competitive games since you can play at native resolution and then simply add the anti lag Plus. And well guys, that's all for today's video. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video as that really helps a lot. And don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about this video. What, what, what do you think about these results and what were the results that you got? And I'm talking really fast because the camera battery is going off. Uh, and basically that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget, comment section and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.